Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching this Kibo Cube Academy on demand lecture. So, this is lecture number 07 Introduction to CubeSat Technologies. So, my name is Toshinori Kuwahara, Associate Professor at the Department of Aerospace Engineering of Tohoku University, Japan, and also the Chairperson of UNICEF Japan. So my research topics are space development, utilization, and exploration by small spacecraft technologies. So now let's start the lecture. Here is an overview of this presentation. So I will start with an introduction to space systems, followed by an introduction to CubeSat systems, definition of satellite subsystems, CubeSat payload systems, ground station, launch and operation, and finally, I conclude my presentation. The first chapter is the introduction to space systems. First of all, so we need to understand about satellite orbits when we talk about space technology utilization. So there are many different types of satellite orbits. I have illustrated several typical satellite orbits in this figure. The blue one is the geosynchronous orbit. So it's also called GEO. The orbit altitude is about 36,000 kilometers. So geostationary satellites are located on this orbit and they are rotating around the Earth once a day with the same rotational velocity of the Earth. So when you look up, these satellites seem to be at the same position in the sky throughout the day, generally speaking. So the green one is the sun synchronous orbit, so also known as SSO. An SSO is a kind of polar orbit and fl uh, flies over the North and South Pole regions. So together with the effect of the Earth's rotation, so satellites in SSO have a chance to fly over most of the places on the Earth. Moreover, the sun direction relative to the uh, sun synchronous orbit, SSO, is constant throughout the year. So you have the same illumination condition on the observing Earth's surface. So therefore, this orbit is suitable for Earth's observation. The red orbit is the uh, International Space Station orbit. The orbit is tilted with an inclination angle of about 51.6 degrees. So the altitude is, altitude is about 400 kilometers. And because the orbit altitude is low, the ISS orbit also belongs to low Earth orbit, or also known as LEO. So satellites released from the ISS will also follow a similar orbit as the ISS. So unlike the SSO, the sun synchronous orbit, the sun illumination condition of the ISS orbit changes with the time. So you need to consider uh, several important effects on your satellites, such as power generation and thermal control. So uh, as indicated here, the most appropriate orbit for the mission needs to be uh, selected. So, or in other words, so your mission needs to be designed according to the available satellite orbits. So practically speaking, so if you utilize the satellite release opportunity from the ISS, your satellite needs to be designed in the way that it can survive in the ISS orbit for a long time period, basically for years. So for the satellite operation, you need to understand the characteristics of satellite orbital motion. So I will explain these one by one on this slide. So satellites in ISS orbit rotate around the Earth about 16 times per day, which means that uh, one revolution of the orbit takes about 1.5 hours or 90 minutes. Earth also rotates uh, once per day. So as a result, the relative velocity between the ground station and the satellite is uh, on the order of about 7.7 kilometers per second. 
The satellite operator has a limited amount of time for communication with the satellite, which is about 10 minutes or less per contact, and you have several contacts a day. This also depends on the geographical position of the ground station. The satellite operator sends commands to satellite from the ground station and receives telemetry data from them, in most of the cases via radio frequency communication. For satellite operations, the following aspects must be considered. So satellite orbit and the mission lifetime, communication system, ground station, link budget design, operational phases, and regulations. So satellites orbiting in high inclination orbits can cover a large portion of geographical area on Earth. So here I have an uh, animation of a satellite on the ISS orbit and its ground track. So you can now understand how the satellite can cover a portion of Earth due to the com combined effects of satellite orbital motion and Earth rotational motion. So this feature of global accessibility can be utilized for Earth observation. So you can conduct uh, periodic frequent observations of ground area under the satellite orbit. For communication, so you can have communication contact with ground stations in the visible area. And for environmental measurement, so you can measure the space environment such as magnetic field, radiations, etc. So higher orbits can have a wider field of view and lower orbits can uh, facilitate higher ground resolutions of Earth observation. So satellites are basically uh, continuously falling toward the Earth. So this free fall microgravity environment can be utilized for experiments related to material science, bioscience, medicine, etc. Space also provides unique environments such as a vacuum, high radiation, strong ultraviolet light, cold and hot temperature, and the existence of atomic oxygen and plasma, etc. So if you think about space utilization, you can consider these important characteristics of the space environment and space systems. So let's uh, examine the ISS orbit in detail. So these are the par parameters of the ISS orbit. The orbit altitude is about 400 kilometers. The inclination is about 51.6 degrees. The orbital period is about 91 minutes. So it is also very important to know that the orbital altitude of the ISS is changing by about uh, plus or minus uh, 20 kilometers due to the effects of atmospheric drag. The higher the initial orb orbital altitude of the satellite at uh, deployment from the ISS, the longer the mission lifetime you will have. So as I already mentioned, the CubeSat deploy deployed from the ISS stay in almost the same orbit as the ISS. So slight differences in uh, initial relative velocity and different mechanical characteristics, such as mass and shape of the satellites, make the CubeSats separate from each other in different orbits. So this is the 3D view, uh, and this is the ground track in 2D on the world map. So as you can see, the ISS orbit covers the ground surface of uh, regions with relatively lower latitude, so between a plus minus 51.6 degrees. So our ISS rotates around the Earth about 16 times a day, while the Earth rotates about 22.5 degrees during one orbital period of the ISS. So there are some other important general engineering aspects to consider. So satellites cannot be repaired in orbit after they are launched, generally speaking. So you can only communicate with them in order to conduct planned missions. 
and solve unexpected problems or upgrade the functionalities through software updates. The satellites need to be self-sustaining in orbit in terms of uh, power generation, storage, and measurement, thermal control, communication, attitude determination and control, data handling, and mission control. And therefore, it is very important that uh, solo operational scenarios and procedures are developed and the satellite operators are well trained before the launch in order to make the most of the satellite mission lifetime. So it is a, a precious opportunity. So the second chapter is introduction to CubeSat system. I have already shown you several pictures of CubeSats. So uh, one new CubeSat is a 10 centimeter cube with a mass of up to 1.33 kilogram. Some standards are available and I have listed them up here. So the first one I introduced is the CubeSat design specification, revision 13, uh, organized by the California uh, Polytechnic State University. It is publicly, uh, publicly available and the distinct. So this standard provides the basic idea of CubeSats. So uh, I recommend that you are informed about it at the first step. So there are several more working documents available in the community. The second one I introduce today is the CubeSat system interface definition organized by UNICEF Europe. So this standard suggests uh, interface definitions for the internal electrical components of CubeSats. So this is available here. The third one is the ISO standard. A standard for space systems about CubeSat is established in uh, 2017, which addresses uh, CubeSats, CubeSat deployer, and related verification of assurance and quality terms and matrices. The fourth one is the GEM, Payload Accommodation Handbook, Volume 8, Revision D, so released uh, by JAXA. So JAXA, uh, the, I think this is the most important uh, and relevant document for you when you uh, apply for a launch opportunity through Kivo Cube Academy. So GEM stands for a Japanese experiment module, which is another name of the Kibo module. So both English and Japanese versions of Revision D is available here. Though uh, one new CubeSat is a 10 centimeter cube, the dimension in the uh, rail di direction is a bit longer than 10 centimeter as illustrated in this figure, just for your information. So on this slide, I have summarized the CubeSat deployment uh, opportunities from Kibo. So Kibo provides uh, options of JSOT in uh, three different forms, 3U, long 6 u and wide 6 u consequently. So uh, there are these uh, kinds of uh, form factors of CubeSat which you can utilize uh, for your own project. So they are 1U, 1.5U, 2U, 3U, 4, 5U, and then uh, as well as the long and wide 6U. It's possible that your satellite is stored into the pot together with satellites uh, deployed by other projects, developed by other project teams. So among the possible uh, form factors of CubeSats, the one new CubeSat is especially the best platform to learn essential engineering skills and uh, technologies for satellite development and operation at the first step. So these pictures below uh, illustrate the outer appearance and uh, internal components of a one new CubeSat. Uh, one new CubeSat is the simplest implementation 
So larger CubeSats can be utilized uh, depending on the technology level and mission requirements. A smaller format is uh, mainly for fundamental functionalities. So larger formats are required for missions, which require larger sensors, accurate actual control, and large amounts of data transfer, and so on. Though the form factor is very small, CubeSat components are getting more and more sophisticated, and nowadays there are a lot of commercial CubeSat components available in the market. These are some of the example commercial products. So with the help of these commercial products, you can construct some components by yourself and you can buy the remaining components from the market. And in this way, you can now start using CubeSats very seamlessly from scratch and can gradually develop your own technologies. In the following chapter, the definition of satellite subsystems, I'd like to explain about the general functional classification of satellite components together with examples of CubeSat devices. First of all, the functionalities of a satellite system can be classified into several subsystems, which are closely related with each other. So this slide uh, tries to illustrate the relationship. So this is the typical classification in, into subsystems. They are the power control system, communication system, command and data handling system, structure and mechanism system, Summon control system, actual control system, and orbit control system for advanced uh, missions, and payroll system. So the actual control system is sometimes also uh, referred to as the actual determination and control system, as it needs to be determining the satellite attitude first in order to control it. The Attitude control system and orbital control system are sometimes uh, treated as a single subsystem as attitude and orbit control system. As illustrated, I have put the payroll system in the middle on the top of all the subsystems. So I wanted to emphasize that uh, the payload is uh, representing the satellite mission objectives. And all the subsystems exist to uh, fulfill the required, required uh, functionalities to achieve the mission objectives with the payload. Also, uh, all subsystems except the payload system are denoted as the satellite bus system with the payload being the passenger among the other subsystems of the bus. So in addition to this, I point out that you also need to pay attention to the harness system of the satellite. The harness system is, in other words, the electrical cables to connect components. Harness systems are usually regarded as a part of the power control system or command and data handling system. The reason that I put this extra here is that the harness cables inside a CubeSat have a great influence on satellite assembly. So I will show you some pictures in the following slides. So in CubeSat project, uh, it has more importance than bigger satellite projects that you carefully design the harness system and plan their routing inside the very limited envelope of the CubeSats. Though all the subsystems are equally important. I will try to explain the most essential ones in my opinion. So the first subsystem I pick up today uh, in this sense is the power control system. A power control system manages power generation by, by solar panels, stretched into secondary rechargeable batteries and distribution of power to the satellite components. So this combination of components I mentioned, the solar cells, batteries, and power control computer can be regarded as the power control system. The power control computer is usually 
is referred to as the power control unit or power control and distribution unit. So sometimes the power control unit and power distribution unit can be uh, separate components. So PCU and or PCDU sometimes uh, convert the uh, supply voltage to the satellite components inside. So power control uh, system shall be highly reliable as uh, compared to uh, other onboard components. So if your power control system is functioning very well, then you can uh, try to repair other failed components by conducting power cycling. So that is uh, you power off the device once and then power on the device again and see if it recovers. I think you sometimes uh, encounter a similar situation with your laptop computer. So what do you do in such a situation? So you reboot your computer. So we do the same in space too. To ensure this capability, the power control system of your satellite cannot fail in orbit. The size of solar cells and uh, capacity of the battery shall be determined based on the power consumption requirements of the satellite mission. These are the pictures of exemplary power control system components. So solar cells, batteries, and some uh, power control units. Sometimes the power control system is closely integrated with the communication system as it is uh, convenient for you if you have more remote control on the power control computer by a radio wave communication. The device in this picture is such an example of an integrated component. Here I have an example of a power control system. So this is the 2U CubeSat RICO developed by Tohoku University. So this satellite is the world first CubeSat released from the ISS. So this table summarizes the specification of the power generation, power storage, and the power consumption of the CubeSat. The power generation of this satellite was on average about 3.2 Watt without the solar panel deployment and 4.7 Watt after the panel deployment. You can imagine the order of available power for your satellite too. The power consumption was about 4.9 Watt at the maximum uh, during the communication. The power consumption in the standby mode is kept uh, sufficiently low so that the generated power can be charged to the battery to survive the eclipse during the Earth's shadow and to allow higher power consumption when required. The next subsystem I pick up is the communication system. As the satellite operates remotely in space, the information exchanges through communication are indispensable to make the mission of the satellite uh, meaningful. The communication throughput, namely amount of the data, especially for the downlink in general, determine and limits the, the entire performance of the satellite system itself. For high-speed communication, higher electrical power is required, and the temperature of the transmitter increases during the communication. So typically a ground contact lasts about 10 minutes or less. The receiver shall be ideally powered on at the all the time so that the satellite doesn't miss any command sent from the ground station. The transmitter can be turned on and off according to the ground contact schedule. So this is important to save electrical power for the satellite. The pictures below illustrate an exemplary S-band uh, radio frequency transmitter and receiver, also showing the outer and inner uh, appearance of an X-band transmitter. The amount of mission data downlink can be increased by uh, using more than one ground station if available. 
So collaborative satellite operation is therefore very useful. So communication systems also require an onboard uh, antenna. Low frequency radio waves, that is uh, longer wavelengths, radio waves require a larger antenna. So VHF and UHF frequency bands are widely used for CubeSats and they require an antenna with larger dimensions. High frequency bands such as S-band and X-bands which are also used for high-speed communication for CubeSats, uh, require a smaller antenna. It is often the case that a Yagi-type antenna is used for the low-frequency bands, and a Dish-type antenna is used for high-frequency bands for the ground station, as illustrated in the figures. The next subsystem is the command and data handling system. The command and data handling system, often denoted as C and DH, manages uh, data handling, uh, components commanding, monitoring, data storage, signal processing for communication, and error handling inside the satellite. So certain levels of autonomous uh, functions need to be implemented in C and DH so that satellites can survive in the space environment. A high level of reliability is required for, required for the C and DH computers too. When the computer fails to uh, function correctly due to, for example, or radiation effects, the power control system shall power cycle the computer. So power off and on, uh, either autonomously or by telecommand from the ground station. There are many different kinds of onboard computers. So this figure illustrates an uh, onboard computer I use for a one new CubeSat. So this computer is a very simple computer based on a uh, PIC. So on the other hand, these pictures show uh, examples of uh, two uh, commercial available onboard computers with high computational capabilities, large onboard memory storage, and digital signal processing. Onboard components and onboard computers define the uh, capability of the onboard date handling, and uh, you need to design or select appro appropriate ones for your purposes. So the next subsystem is a structure and mechanism system. So let's take a look at the structure first. So satellite structure systems are the main interface with the launch vehicle. In the case of CubeSats, the rails are the uh, contact points between the satellite and the pod. The outer dimensions, surface area, and surface treatment of the rails and outer envelope of the entire satellites are specified. The structure systems shall uh, withstand the launch environment such as vibration, static acceleration, shock, acoustic, air venting, uh, pressure, and so on. So this picture shows the structure system of a one U CubeSat. So our mechanical systems include uh, separation switches, deployable antennas, deployable solar panels, shutters, booms, and any other mechanically moving structure elements on the satellite. So mechanical systems shall be safely stored during the launch to ensure the secure release of the CubeSat from the pod. So this picture shows a solar panel deployment mechanism as an uh, example. The next subsystem is a thermal control system. So thermal control of a satellite can be achieved in two different ways. So passive control and active control. As active control needs electrical power, so heaters, coolers, and so on in general, 
So passive control is the uh, usual thermal control uh, concept of CubeSense. So passive thermal control utilizes uh, different surface materials with uh, different thermal optical characteristics in order to adjust heat exchange among the satellite, deep space, and the Earth. An aluminum surface contributes to warming up the temperature. A captain tape surface contributes to cooling down the thermal condition, for example. I am showing an uh, example of the one new cubes at Freedom. So Freedom actually it doesn't have solar panels and only has a battery system. So Freedom introduced a passive thermal control with a tape material, pasted on the satellite surface for a certain portion to keep the satellite temperature low enough. The principle of thermal control is the uh, same for larger CubeSats. So you need to learn a simulation analysis and design your satellite thermal properties uh, appropriately. The next subsystem is the actual control system. Actual control capability is required uh, depending on the mission operation of the satellite, such as uh, pointing observation instruments toward the target, pointing high gain antenna toward the ground station for high speed communication as illustrated in the figure. Uh, orienting solar panels toward the sun for larger power generation, and so on. So for the actual control, actual determination is also necessary beforehand. Therefore, actual determination sensors and actual control actuators are required in general. So there are also two types of actual control, passive control and active control. And there are many different kinds of actual control modes. So the tampering control is one of them. Uh, after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the ISS, you need to detumble the rotational motion of your spacecraft. And then pointing control, such as uh, inertial pointing, nadia pointing, target pointing, velocity direction pointing and so on. These are the uh, some kinds of actual control modes. So I'd like to elaborate a little bit more about the actual control system. One of the most important actual control modes is the detumbering control. So satellites can experience a high rotational rate after the separation from the launch vehicle or release from the ISS. In general, satellites in high-speed rotation cannot communicate with the ground station properly. So satellites shall be able to detumble and reduce rotational speed down to about several degrees per second at the maximum. There are two types of detumbering controls. One is the active control, another one is the passive. So for the active control in general, you generate a magnetic moment by means of magnetic talkers to interact with the Earth's magnetic field. So actively slowing down the rotational rate. So passive control is uh, you utilize uh, permanent magnets and magnetic hysteresis dampers to passively slow down the rotational rate. So this picture is an example of a, a magnetic torque. Another interesting actual control method is the gravity gradient control. So gravity gradient control belongs to passive control. Satellite with uh, long shapes and uh, spread mass distribution experience gravity gradient torque, such as the, uh, the longitudinal direction points toward the Earth. Cameras, antennas, 
and sensors can be pointed toward the Earth without additional electrical power for the actual control. But the pointing accuracy is relatively low. So this can uh, also be combined with uh, active actual control with some actual control actuators, such as magnetic talkers and reaction waves. The last example of actual control is the active three axis actual control. So actual control actuators, such as magnetic talkers and reaction wheels, are used for active three axis control. And especially reaction wheels can realize agile and stable actual control. This is shown in this animation. So by three axis active actual control, you can point your camera instruments toward the observation target, for example. You can then obtain this kind of image by your satellite. So disturbance torques acting on the satellite uh, gradually accumulate as angular momentum stored in the reaction wheels. So therefore, reaction wheels cannot be operated for a long time without desaturation using magnetic torques in general. So also, I need to mention that uh, satellite attitude shall be determined precisely by means of a combination of actual determination sensors for this method of actual control. The last subsystem is the payload system. Payload systems are the onboard components dedicated to satellite's missions. Good practice is to define a clear interfaces, mechanical and electrical, with the bus system. In this slide, you can see the example of 3U CubeSat, S cube. So this picture is showing the payload module of the CubeSat. And then one U is assigned for the payload instrument and two U is assigned for the satellite bus system in this example. So finally, I will show you the harness cables of the CubeSat. So this is an example of the 3U CubeSat SQ again. So I hope you can get the sense of how important and critical a uh, careful, desi careful design of the harness system is. And that you assign enough envelope for them from the very beginning of the satellite development. So this concludes the explanation of satellite subsystems. Now we come to the next topic, CubeSat payload systems. Each CubeSat has its own missions. The larger the CubeSat is, the more payload instruments can be carried and the more advanced the missions are that can be conducted. So examples of CubeSat payload instruments include uh, observation cameras for Earth's planetary astrono astronomy, etc., in-situ space environment measurement sensors, Meteor measurement sensors, communication instruments, engineering demonstrations, such as uh, deployment mechanisms or advanced technologies, such as new sensors, electrodynamic tether, etc. Today, I'd like to introduce you to five of these examples in the following slides. This is an example of an Earth observation camera system. This is a 2U CubeSat, RICO. It was implemented with an Earth observation camera system, as well as a new sensor, a uh, star tracker, for the satellite attitude determination. Again, you can see that the harness system is very complex and takes a certain volume inside the satellite. So this is the first example. The next example is the meteor observation instrument. This is the three cubes at S cube. It was implemented with a meteor observation camera system. 
A gravity gradient boom was used to point the meteor observation camera toward the Earth's atmosphere for uh, detecting incandescent meteors as they enter the atmosphere. It also had uh, deployable solar panels. The next example is the signal measurement instrument. So recently, receiving and analyzing ground-based AIS signals, the automatic identif identification system signals from space is attracting uh, interest. In this case, the receiver and the deployable uh, directional antenna system are the payload. In this example, a uh, three axis axial control is utilized to point the antenna toward the Earth for detecting AIS signals sent from ships on Earth, enabling tracking the positions of the ships with a higher geographical resolution. The next example is the orbit demonstration of a thin film deployment mechanism. This example is the one you cube sat freedom. The payload was the deorbit set for first uh, the, for the first uh, deorbiting and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere from the ISS orbit. This CubeSat had no communication system or solar cells. The freedom demonstrated on-orbit deployment of the same film based uh, the orbit set which can be utilized for space debris uh, mitigation and privation using atmospheric drag. So this successfully demonstrated the orbit sail device and is now available for uh, CubeSat and microsatellite. This is a CubeSat Freedom. And this is the deployed steam film during the ground verification. The CubeSat Freedom uh, they orbited into the Earth's atmosphere in about 22 days after it was released from the ISS, which is, I believe, uh, the shortest record for re-entry. The last example is the electrodynamic tether. This is the 3U CubeSat AVEDT. The payload is an electrodynamic tether for the orbiting and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. A three axis attitude control is used to control the satellite attitude during the e extension of the electrodynamic tether. The device will be useful for space debris mitigation and prevention in higher altitude orbits as it can operate independent of atmospheric drag. So I hope you uh, now have a deeper understanding and a clearer ideas uh, of what you can achieve by means of uh, CubeSats. The next topic is ground stations. So this slide illustrates the ground station setup for CubeSat operations. This is a case of Tohoku University as an example. The ground stations usually consist of antenna hardware, RF components, operation room, and operation software. The operation software consists of antenna controller, satellite controller, transmitter, receiver controller, and so on. So it is recommended that uh, you develop at least this uh, satellite uh, control software by yourself. The more software you develop by yourself, uh, the more flexibility and maintainability can be achieved. So communication systems usually involve the following components in both directions. So that is uh, uplink and downlink. So components, transmitter and transmitting antenna, receiver and receiving antenna, cables, the other components such as power amplifiers, 
radio frequency cables, which are thick, and their connectors, and which are relatively large. So this is illustrated in this figure. The components of the ground station, including the antenna, can be quite large. And those of uh, CubeSats are relatively small. The communication channels in both directions between the satellite and the ground station need to be carefully designed. The received RF signal power at receivers shall be strong enough for stable communication. So please ensure a sufficient link margin. So the link budget is the relationship between the data rate, antenna size, propagation path length, and transmitter power, and losses through the communication channels. The propagation path between the satellite and the ground station is the longest at lower elevation angles at the beginning uh, and the end of the satellite contact, as illustrated in this figure. This is one of the design criteria for the link budget design. So the latitude of the ground track of the CubeSats deployed from the ISS is between about uh, 51.6 degrees plus minus. And therefore, their ground stations need to be located in that region. This is an exemplary a ground station located at uh, our Tohoku University. And this is, uh, moving object is uh, satellite. Of course, this is not the real velocity. So the circles of both the ground station and the satellite illustrate the region and distance they can communicate within. In low or latitude regions, CubeSats can approach the ground station from uh, both the northwest and the southwest and different direction in day and night, roughly speaking. The duration of the ground contact is the longest when the CubeSat flies right above the ground station. However, some ground stations cannot track satellites around the vertical direction due to the mechanical configuration reasons. So you need to pay attention when you calculate the total amount of the data to be communicated for your spacecraft. The ground contact time and the amount of communication data can be increased by using more than one ground station, which is uh, geographically separated from other ground stations. Finally, I'd like to introduce the launch and operation of CubeSats deployed from the ISS with some pictures. The operational phase of the satellite to be deployed from the ISS can be categorized into several phases as follows. In the launch phase, the CubeSat is launched and delivered to the ISS. So this will be the first very exciting and emotional moment for you. In the preparation phase, the CubeSat is stored in the ISS and prepared for uh, deployment into orbit by astronauts. In the early operation phase, the CubeSat is actually deployed from the ISS and the communication link is established with the ground station. And the initial satellite inspection is conducted. So in the mission phase, the CubeSat conducts uh, its missions, such as uh, taking pictures and so on. Finally, in the disposal phase, the CubeSat is set to disposal mode and awaits re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So these figures illustrate each phases, each phase. And then the CubeSat, uh, 
prepared for the deployment inside ISS by astronauts. So this uh, is uh, the situation is illustrated in these figures. So they are Japanese astronauts in these figures. The deployment mechanism is uh, transferred to outside ISS through this uh, air rock and uh, attached to the tip of the robotic arm, like this, of the keyboard. And finally, an astronaut or ground crew uh, triggers the switch for the deployment and the CubeSat is finally released from the ISS. So this is the moment. And I think this will be a, the second very exciting and emotional moment for you. Yes, now I'd like to conclude my presentation. So in summary, the characteristics of satellite technologies and CubeSat systems are described and available uh, where CubeSat standards are introduced. The functionalities of each satellite subsystem, including the payload system, are described in detail. Some examples of CubeSat payload devices are provided together with real satellite projects. Ground station components and communication link budgets between satellites are described. Launch and operation uh, aspects of CubeSats are described. So with this, I'd like to finish my lecture today. Thank you very much for your attention.